Welcome back everybody. We are gonna talk about the Blackout Defense Quantum Mark II rifle on the follow-up right here. And as you can see, the way that I have this one outfitted with my Aimpoint H2 Scalarworks mount, Cloud Defense light, dead air can, Troy flip-up sights and everything in here. This is set up to be one of my go-to sweet honeys right here. But I wanted to do the follow-up video on this because the Blackout Quantum Mark II and the Blackout Defense triggers were two of the most favorite things I got to test in 2021. The triggers, flat out amazing. But I wanted to get back into the rifle and talk about how it's wearing in, what I've learned about it, what I have done to it to kind of make this thing run exactly how I want it, especially running that can on it. So you guys kind of understand what this rifle's all about. And I usually want to do that at about the 5,000 round mark. I didn't get to 5,000 rounds this time because ammo is just insane. Expensive still, and I'm not Grantham. I don't get like 10,000 rounds shipped to me when I review a rifle or a pistol. So I'm at about the 3,500 round mark, which is still pretty good, but I like that 5K because that's just kind of a happy point where I think that you're really gonna start to see if something's gonna go wrong or if everything is gonna continue to go right. Now sitting at that 3,500 round mark, what we're gonna talk about is how that bolt is wearing and what we're seeing on there, is it coating wear or something else going on? the buffer that I'm running in there and how I've kind of got that thing dialed in where I'm running it with the can, without the can, what you can do there. And then of course, just the overall functionality. Have I maintained accuracy on all of that good stuff when it comes to the blackout defense rifle? So before we get into all that, this rifle and some of the ammo that I've tested this was provided by blackout defense. So there is a relationship there. I have become friends with the owner, the owner's wife there, who's the other half owner. <laughs> And there's people that work there. The main armor there is an XSF dude, awesome guy. They've got really cool people. I've been in the shop multiple times. So there is somewhat of a relationship with there. So take that into account as we talk about this. You guys deserve that honesty. So with that being said, let's start talking about how this thing's wearing in and what I have done to it. First, let's get right into how this thing functions out there and how it was under that recoil pull. Nine. And they've got that gas system and that barrel length tuned in very, very well with the blackout springs that they put in there as far as the buffer spring and they send it with a carbine buffer. Now, ultimately I think an H1 is perfect for most people in there. And you can get a variety of muzzle brakes on this from the dead air that I've got, the chemo mount on there, they have their own and they can also put other ones on there for you. However, I find that an H1 runs perfectly smooth definitely downs that recoil impulse a little bit and gives you great reliability as well. But I run this thing with a can a little bit. So I'm kind of sometimes running the can and sometimes push the limits of that buffer weight to see what I could get away with. Me personally, I found an H2 is really right there on that almost perfect spot. And I say almost perfect because that H2 buffer without the can is really on the line of almost being slightly kind of a weak ejection pattern, but it's right on the line. If you kind of pay attention to that like ejection pattern diagram that you can see online, that'll show you if you're overgassed, undergassed, or right in that sweet spot. It is literally right on that line. So with a can, that H2 is great. Without the can, it is super soft with that H2 buffer. Now, if you wanted to run dedicated can on this thing, run that dead air, uh, Sam is, you could run an H3, no problem at all, and it will function very, very nice, even when super dirty. Now, when it comes to accuracy, I haven't noticed a shift at all. I did change over from some of the optics I tested on here, from the Vortex Solar Spark to the Aimpoint H2 on there on that Scatterworks mount, because like I said, this is one of my now dedicated rifles that I go to time and time again. So I wanted to put the best I could afford on that rifle. So the accuracy and as far as how the barrel is performing is exactly as to be expected. And I wouldn't expect to see any problems with that barrel for many, many thousands of more rounds because these barrels are made of high quality stuff and they're going to last a very long time. Well, let's go ahead and take a good look at the bolt and carrier group here. Cause what we're gonna see on this is a nitrided bolt. Uh, it's Carpenter 153 on the actual bolt and then it's 9310 on the carrier. That nitride coating, you're going to see a little bit of wear, but what we're looking for on this bolt is to see if there is anything in the way of the gas key loosening. Is the staking still good? Any problems with the lugs? Are we seeing any abnormal wear on this? And as you can see, there's nothing going on here. The little bit of coating wear to be expected. Other than that, this bolt is in perfect condition on the top side, on the corners, on the gas key. 
The lugs are in absolutely great shape. And of course, the gas rings are still doing just fine, even though this thing has a lot of suppressed rounds through it. Because when you run a suppressor, you're gonna be changing out your gas rings a little bit more because you're upping the pressure when it comes back into that gas system. Quick way to check that is if you just put the bolt and carrier, extend it out and lay it down. If it collapses under its own weight, you should probably look at getting some new gas rings. Now, as far as the trigger goes with the Blackout Defense stuff, if you've not seen the original video I did on the Quantum Mark II, you can check that out and that trigger. But my initial response the first few rounds out on the range looked a little something like this. When it comes to the look and the fit of the receiver here, these things fit super tight and that's the way they are meant to be. Now there is that press lock technology in the front and that's to give it another level of rigidity, although I don't really think they need it. It's just kind of like an added feature. So upper and lower are super tight and having something in the front of that that's gonna lock that receiver in tighter is definitely better than having a set screw up under the pistol grip, which is gonna cause possibly some carrier tilt in there and some abnormal wear because if you think about it you're sending the upper receiver at a weird angle by putting a set screw up underneath that rear pin section where it locks in you can just have some problems so tightening it up at the front to keep everything working linear through that uh, cycle of operation is definitely a better way to go about it but again the receiver set is super tight and it just looks super slick now when it comes to the rail and kind of how I have this thing outfitted, like I said, this is one of my go-tos. So I've got the Troy flip-up sights on there, as you can see out on the front of that rail, that cloud defense mini ring with the cloud activation button sitting nice and tight in there with that Aerosock mount. Just a smooth setup, absolute flamethrower of a light. You also see that minimal Midwest Industries barricade stop. I love that thing because that's just enough to get my hand on and not too much to where it's a bulky item on the end of that rail. You'll also see those nice kind of grit looking rail covers right there. Those are actually from Walker Defense Research. And that's not grip tape or some kind of sandpaper in there. That's actually the diamond carbide stuff inlaid into that grip. The cool thing that's different about these as they attach to the M-Lock is that carbide stuff is actually depressed into those rail sections so you're not going to rub your gear raw with it. There's a just enough material on the edges to deflect up and off. So you're not gonna wear out items or have that stuff torn off because it's slightly sub flush to the actual rail section. Now working your way back from there, you're gonna see that Aimpoint H2 on the Scalar Works mount, the Magpul K2 grip, and of course that flatline fiber sling. Well, let's go ahead and talk about what Blackout Defense is updating on the Mark II and the soon to be out Mark III. So on the newer rifles, they're going to have QD attachments on them, on the rail and on the rear end plate. This one has the end plate and I had to add the one on the rail. So Blackout Defense will be including that in the future. Also, they began making their own back plate instead of using the Magpul one so they can stake it without worrying about fracturing. Apparently the Magpul one, if you stake it in more than one place, kind of has a tendency to crack or fracture. I've never done that, but that is according to the armor over at Blackout. So they've also come out with their own Ambi charging handle, which is definitely a nice touch because what they're trying to do is make every single part they can in-house to completely do the quality control items inside rather than ordering parts from the outside and maybe having some issues with those. They'll also be changing over to the Magpul stock and then using a Magpul K2 grip because that grip has less of an aggressive angle, which is just much more comfortable for the modern shooting platform and hold style when it comes to rifles. And the last change, they may be doing a pistol variant out there very soon and see how that does in the market. So knowing all that stuff, let's talk about the price of these things. So the Quantum Mark II, as this one sits with those additional things that they have done, is sitting right at $2,079. And in that price, you're going to get the Blackout Defense trigger of your choice, whether it's three or four and a half pounds, the muzzle device of your choice, and those updates that we just went over. But that's what you're gonna get for that price. When you think about it, if you buy something else and you put aftermarket trigger and your muzzle device on there, as long as it's a rifle in the same class, you're gonna be right at that price point. So I think for what they've done here, it's a pretty solid setup. And like I said, the way I've outfitted it, it is definitely my go-to right now and probably is going to see 
a lot more ammo spit through this thing. Well, that is what I've got for you guys today. I hope you liked seeing the update on the Blackout Defense. I wish I could have gotten to 5,000 rounds for you guys, but it just wasn't feasible with the cost of ammo right now. But a huge thank you to all of you. Channel grew a ton in 2021. I'm looking forward to 2022. Massive thank you to all of my Patreons out there. Um, I think a couple of you guys got some blackout triggers in that giveaway. I will have another one coming up for you guys real soon. Once they drop a few new things, you Patreons will get a solid giveaway. Make sure you guys get subbed up, get belled up, turn those notifications on. Leave me a comment. Are you interested in blackout or do you already have enough rifles or is there such a thing as enough rifles? So you guys get on the range, have some fun. Remember, if you stay ready, you ain't got to get ready. Even if it looks as sexy as this, I will see you guys on the next one.